Well, good. Thanks for attending today. Over the last six months, Crime Stoppers South Australia has worked with South Australian Police to deliver a, a national list of drugs campaign across the South Australian community. This has happened in every jurisdiction in state and territory across Australia. We're coming to the end of that particular campaign and this week we'll, our focus turns to Metropolitan Adelaide okay, in regards to that campaign. Over the last five and a half months, the campaign has targeted industry engagement, particularly along freight routes, logistics, truck companies, and organisations that transport goods across borders. So our community engagement nationally, we've had over 130 events across Australia. In South Australia, we've had multiple events in various locations from the southeast to the Murray Mallee, to the Air Peninsula, around ports, and including transport and freight routes. Over that period of time, We've worked with SAPOL in regards to delivering community messaging, basically indicating to the South Australian public that if they know something about illicit drugs, drug trade, those dealing in those particular situations, they can bring crime stoppers or make an online report and report that anonymously with no impact to their identity. And in the last week of the drugs campaign, we're just making a call to action okay, across Metropolitan Adelaide to uh, have a last ditch attempt to engage with the public to make that call if they know anything about the drugs campaign. Um, I'll cross over to Detective Chief Inspector Cathy Gilliard, okay, to um, say a few words on behalf of Crime Solver, um, not Crime Solver, this is Safe Hold, sorry. Oh, thank you. Um, look, thanks for this morning. Um, I guess what we do know is South Australia continues to be a location where illicit drugs um, are seized by police on a regular basis. Um, the National Wastewater Drug Program identifies that Adelaide is the highest in the nation in respect to the consumption of methamphetamine and second in respect to the consumption of cannabis. Um, and whilst the focus is on the Adelaide metropolitan area, it also includes Barossa, uh, Murray Lands, Riverland, Air Peninsula, and also the Southeast. There is nothing that precludes people from across the state or even interstate with providing information about illicit drugs in South Australia. And um, whilst organised crime syndicates become more more sophisticated, and um, police continue to seize uh, large amounts of quantity of illicit drugs, and so this is very much an appeal. And working with this partnership through Crime Stoppers, the community, and South Australia Police and asking people to provide information and intelligence which will inform police as to how best to use their resources to counter drugs coming into the state. Since April this year, Crime Stoppers has received 572 calls relating to methamphetamine, 2,078 calls in relation to other drugs, and 125 calls relating to drug trafficking. There are clear linkages between illicit drugs and criminality, and notwithstanding, drugs have an insidious impact on our communities, not just on the health and well-being of the individuals and the families, but also on the social and economic status of those communities and the community as a whole. So the information provided to Crime Stoppers, whether it be an anonymous report or, or leaving your name, whether it be a phone call in or an online communication, allows police to actually garner their resources and provide resources in the relevant areas in order to combat drug trafficking. Outcomes may be various and can include search warrants being executed at premises, but also the information might provide a larger piece of a jigsaw um, in a larger uh, organised crime uh, investigation, which will garner further resources and perhaps seizures across the state. So this, crime, uh, this partnership between Crime Stoppers, police and the community is really vital and we encourage people to make uh, phone calls to Crime Stoppers or go online and report illicit drugs in the state this week. Thank you. Any questions? Do you have any fears in terms of how many arrests you've made as a result of those phone calls or reports to Crime Stoppers? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, arrests, we, we generally don't count what the arrests are in respect to Crime Stoppers. I don't have that information with me. And this is very much about the anonymity of Crime Stopper, which allows people to provide that information as opposed to what our results are. So the results are in the number of contacts that Crime Stoppers has 
with members of the community as opposed to the outcomes at the other end. Have you seen an increase in the past six months with this campaign happening? Um, the stats speak for themselves um, in respect to the number of calls in relation to drugs. Um, and uh, certainly we'd have to correlate our data across previous years. But equally, the focus at the moment is asking for people to, to uh, provide one more week of action in relation to contacts with uh, Crime Stoppers that will help police in the community moving forward. This is very much about that last piece um, of communication, albeit it occurs all year round, but allows us to uh, garner real information and intelligence uh, to disrupt, um, intervene, intercept, put people before the courts and make the community safer. Given the um, staff shortages at the moment um, with the police force, is there a worry that there's not enough resourcing to address um, maybe all the calls that are coming in? Um, there are a myriad of ways that, excuse me for a sec, <coughs> <coughs> there are a myriad of ways that people can communicate with Crime Stoppers. They can uh, uh, make a phone call, that's 24-7, um, but they can also communicate online. And so there are still opportunities for people to um, to make those calls, uh, it won't be disrupted by resourcing issues. With this campaign, was it, was it advertisement, radio, TV, or was it just face-to-face -face community engagement? Um, that's probably the best yeah, answer. I'll answer that. Thank you. <clears throat> the campaign um, had a, a number of tactics, okay, in terms of engaging with the community. So on the various routes around South Australia, we had billboard advertising. Um, we had local area advertising, so if we were in uh, the Mount Gambier region, there was local advertising and also a digital campaign to support that. Um, in addition to that, we often had face-to-face -face engagement from a pop-up activation in terms of community engagement in locations where community activated or, or came together. So from a campaign point of view, it was multifaceted, um, but uh, from our point of view, it was well done and well run. And on the question in regards to outcomes or success, sometimes investigations take an intelligence coming in, it just takes time. And then police go through um, uh, their processes and for crime stoppers to have an understanding of campaign effects, it takes a, a bit of time for that to come through um, the other end. So what's, what are you doing in Adelaide this week? Is this going to be similar? Can you give us an example of, of what will be run? Well, I think um, a lot of the activation in Adelaide is probably digital in its context, in terms of feeds, um, making people aware that uh, drug activity and the drug trade is active. The community, um, um, the majority of the community are against drugs, and it's a way of uh, engaging with the community to, to make a report anonymously about what they know, okay, to crime stoppers. Their identity is anonymous they're not going to be found out. And even those acting within criminal um, organisations or involvement, they can also make calls, okay, if they see fit to uh, tell us what they know. That information will then be passed on to South Australian Police and it will help in any investigations that um, they are undertaking. Are there particular parts of Metro Adelaide you're expecting to be kind of hotspots or, or more prevalent than, than others that you'll be focusing on? Look, that's probably a question for South Australian Police and, and how um, they will operate. But certainly from our point of view, we'll target the broad metropolitan Adelaide. Our focus in the previous five months has been very much in terms of industry engagement, um, making industry and organisations involved in freight and distribution aware that drugs may be part of their consignment. Um, and they can actually do something about it anonymously. That's led to increases in calls and police will act accordingly. In regards to the metropolitan area, it's a time where we can focus and work with South Australian Police and their call centre operations and online reports to see if we can get uh, a last burst of anonymous information to support any investigations that are currently underway. When you say freight, um, maybe Catherine, you might be able to answer this, when you say freight, do you mean road, rail, water? Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Yes, it, um, there are, as I said earlier, um, organised crime. They've become quite sophisticated. They use a, a number of different and diverse ways of how they get drugs in, into the state. Um, and so, um, obviously, freight is just one aspect of it. You mentioned the um, campaign is running nationally. 
Uh, but given Adelaide's statistics in terms of map views, do you think the campaign um, is using or needs to have extra resources in the in the state and in Adelaide in particular? Uh, from a policing perspective? Yeah. I would imagine that every jurisdiction has their unique wastewater results that provide guidance as to what their activities would be. Um, South Australia happens to be methamphetamine and cannabis. Um, it doesn't matter what the commodity is. South Australia police are invested in detecting and investigating and disrupting any illicit drug uh, commodity. And, and so, th so therefore, I think um, it is across the state program um, where we're asking for people to provide information. Can I just get you on that previous question, whether you're expecting certain areas of Metro Adelaide to be hotspots or have higher, you know, reports than others? Um, I don't think I want to make any assumptions about particular areas. What we do know is uh, the impacts of drugs are across all sorts of communities, whether you're affluent or low socioeconomic areas, so therefore uh, there are no particular hotspots um, and um, I think we're asking for members of the public to call in irrespective of um, their backgrounds and their location. This is one opportunity for them to provide information. Some of these calls today, were they calling in in regards to reporting suspicious behaviour around ports and docks? Um, I don't have that granular uh, detail of activity, but it's ultimately um, any information that's reported um, is assessed as triaged to relevant working areas for um, ongoing investigations. Can, then, oh, can you give an example, I guess, of a member of the public, they don't know what they're looking at, what should they be looking at? What is suspicious behaviour that could be linked to drug? Um, again, it could depend on a number of factors. It could be multiple visitors to a particular location um, over a very short window of time, um, it could be uh, uh, exchanges occurring um, in a park. Um, there are so many different ways of um, transporting commodities and trafficking drugs in the state. So to, to go down one particular avenue, um, I think would be dangerous um, to make that assumption that that's the only, uh, only aspect. So it's really for people to report suspicious activity. If they think that something is not right and that it might have some connection with illicit drugs, um, then we simply ask them to report it. Uh, maybe a, a quick question for Nigel. Um, do you know how the campaign is going in South Australia compared to how it's going nationally? Um, from our point of view, um, the execution's been excellent here in South Australia. Um, I can't comment on other parts of the state, but our work with um, SAPOL is ongoing and it's deep and meaningful. In regards to the previous question, Hannah, um, when we have activations, we get community asking questions. Have people involved in freight and logistics come to those and ask questions? The answer is yes. So good people know when suspicious activity is happening and we're giving them an, an opportunity to report anonymously what they know with um, their identity being um, kept secret. So I think the outcomes will come, but. This has been an excellent campaign and we're in the last tranche of that and we want to make it count. Thank you. Nigel, do you have any...